Hello, I'm Robert Carter, your District Attorney General. Here in our community and across the state, two types of drugs are hurting Tennesseans. The video you are about to watch will provide important information from real Tennesseans who are battling addiction and loss due to the abuse of prescription medication and the use of synthetic drugs. Please join me, my fellow District Attorneys, Tennessee law enforcement community, and our governor as we work to spread life-saving information about the dangers of prescription medications and synthetic drug abuse. Thank you. A cemetery, drug court, the bars and barbed wire of a Tennessee state prison, or this. Strapped to a gurney in a hospital ER as police officers stand around. Just four of the stops you might make in the world of prescription medication abuse or synthetic drug use. Started out buying Percocets, hydrocodone. I take so many, I black out. I wouldn't remember people would tell me the next day what I was doing. If you trade or provide someone else with a pharmaceutical drug, you might as well be putting a load of gun in your face. I stole, robbed, prostituted, so I'm get some more pills. I didn't care. Whatever I had to do to keep surviving, when I called surviving, was staying high. You could end up in the ER, you could end up in jail, you could end up with your parents planning your funeral. The news from Tennessee's district attorneys isn't that there's a growing drug problem in Tennessee. The news is where it's coming from and who is getting hit hard. It's hitting younger ages more and more. In the past, we would see the typical age being the mid-20s or early 30s. And now I'm seeing uh, 18 to 21-year-olds who have a true diagnosis of addiction for five or six years. I built a tolerance to marijuana which led me to start using Xanax. I started taking a little bit at a time, then I started taking a lot. The simple idea behind prescription medications is to heal you, not harm you. A simple idea, but deceptively dangerous. People think because they can walk into their bathroom and open up a medicine cabinet and there's a prescription, uh, they can open that bottle and, and take what's in it, and it's okay. It's not okay. When abused, Prescription medications are more powerful than you can imagine, more addictive than you can handle. A buddy of mine, he was having a party, his parents were gone for the weekend. He got a bunch of us over his house. We started partying, you know, smoking weed, drinking. Then somebody asked us if, you know, we wanted some pills. He got them out of the medicine cabinet from his parents. Dale's addiction took off. He needed more and more medications just to feel normal. When it came to people, Dale just stopped feeling anything at all. I didn't care about nobody. I didn't care about anything. I have a daughter. I didn't even care about her. But not all addictions begin with abuse. Some start with a legal prescription for legitimate need, which is how it began for Patrick and his mother who live in West Tennessee. I was a senior in high school when I first started taking medication. It was hydrocodone. I started out, I had problems with headaches. They continually got worse. I didn't see anything wrong with it because it was prescribed for him and there was a valid reason for him to have it. The normal public doesn't associate prescription drugs with drug use. They picture a dirty person in a bad area of town with a needle in their arm or snorting cocaine. They don't picture a prescription bottle with their name on it. At first, I was taking it every once in a while to help with the pain, but eventually I was having to take more in the day, every four hours as much as I could. Not necessarily be pain-free, but just to function. Patrick's addiction soon had him buying prescription medications off the street, taking him to places he never thought he would go. There was one party when everybody pretty much had something on them, whether it was Oxycontin, Percocet, Vicodin, sleeping medication, hydrocodone, and it was just a swap. Oh, you have this, well, I'll take four or five of these for two of these. Just in time, Patrick's addiction was discovered by his dad. He got help. Otherwise, 
Patrick could have followed the path of inmate number 474060 at Southeastern Tennessee State Regional Correctional Facility. I realized at a point that I had a dependency problem and I hated it. I was at the point where I had to carry around a small bottle of pills everywhere I went. This is Nathan Thomas in a much different uniform than the one he now wears. He was a respected officer in the Cleveland, Tennessee Police Department when he began medications for back pain. Then they give you 10 milligram hydrocodones on top of 10 milligram Percocet you're taking. And here you go, you're just digging your hole even deeper and deeper. Pills of all shapes and sizes, alcohol, cocaine, and needles entered the picture. The cop became a criminal to bankroll his addiction. The biggest thing it's cost me is the part of the relationship with my boys that I'm missing out on. This few years that I have to spend away from them breaks my heart. You know, my mom was terrified. She's seeing her son go through all this. There's not a thing she can do about it. It obviously still breaks my heart to this day. Nathan says getting arrested saved his life. It didn't work out that way for Brian Vaughn. Brian was a loving child. I mean, he was my best friend as well as my son. Brian grew up watching his mother take pills, sell them, and go to jail for it. Whenever I got locked up, he tried to take over what I was doing. He started making a lot of money. And then he started taking the pills and was snorting Oxycontin. But Brian was taking some was one night and he had a gun. Gloria was in jail when Brian died. I had to go visit him in a casket with belly chain and shackles on my feet. Addiction is deadly. It also makes people break the law to get their next pill supply. We see people that spend their whole days going around to doctors, trying to seek prescriptions, complaining of ailments or what have you. I was doctor shopping. I had an orthopedic doctor, I had a pain management doctor. I was ordering them offline. Oh yeah, I was getting a hundred and some pills about a week. Desperate addicts even steal a doctor's prescription pad or alter the amount of pills in a prescription. Tennessee lawmakers are working hard to stop these crimes by creating databases to keep track of suspicious prescriptions. These police photos of confiscated prescription bottles help tell the story of how law enforcement is also working to prevent the illegal flow of pills. Investigators say a clinic like this one is known as a pill mill, something like a fast food drive through for addicts. When your face-to-face -face visit consists of less than two or three minutes, and it's, how are you feeling, what do you need today, and out the door you go. Surveillance photos like these are evidence that the police are watching, arresting abusers, and shutting down pain clinics that cross the line by cashing in on people's addictions. Some doctors you can't hardly get to give you pain medication, and others are handing out like it's pay as can. Here's the result of another drug of choice, synthetic drugs a dangerous chemical mix that imitates a street drug high. I know, man, I want to help y'all out back. The door, take them over. Freddie Sharp of East Tennessee took a hit of his synthetic sold as bath salts. We responded to this gentleman's residence based on phone calls from the family, uh, stating that the, the male was out of control, tearing up the house. Did you shoot it up or? No, I didn't shoot it up with. Deceptively sold as products also labeled incense and plant food. Synthetic drugs come in flashy packages with names like Scooby Snacks, Mad Hatter, and other cute titles. There is an absolute firestorm that we see on the streets right now, and it's all pointing towards synthetic drugs. Relax, Freddie. We're here to help you, buddy. It's one thing to watch the Bristol, Tennessee police video as an outside spectator. It's another to watch it as its star, Freddie Sharp. I felt like I was dying and the demon was in me taking over. I was barely gripping on to control of my body with my fingernails. I felt like I was just like on the verge of busting loose and just going mad. Some of my heaviest addicts will come in and they'll tell me they're scared of the synthetics because they don't know what to expect. One thing you can't expect is tragedy. 
Clarksville police suspect that the driver who caused this accident may have been driving under the influence of synthetic drugs. He lived. The other driver didn't. There is no end to the chase. They continue to seek that ultimate high that they gained the first time. Thanks to the governor, legislature, law enforcement, and Tennessee's district attorneys, the sale of synthetics is now illegal. Plus, there could be jail time for anyone who buys or uses synthetic drugs. In spite of that, a desperate addict can still put his hands on this drug, and that makes it even harder to quit. I'm almost 30 years old. It's time to stop. Time to stop. Easy to say, next to impossible to do, because withdrawal is so painful. Oh, it's terrible. It's unbelievably terrible, especially in a county jail on the concrete floor. The best way to avoid addiction is to never take the drug. Hard to do in an era of modern medicine. But if you have to take certain medications, make sure it's only what the doctor has prescribed for you. Never take medicine meant for someone else. And never leave unused medication sitting around where curious hands can get a hold of them. Dispose of it properly. Like at this drop off for outdated and unused medications. Fighting prescription medication abuse is a team effort with both the public and law enforcement working together. Don't fall for the deception, the lie that you can pop prescription pills for fun or go joyriding with a synthetic drug. No matter how strong you think you are, or how tough you might think you are, there's not much stronger than the power of addiction. The cost is too high. 10 years in prison, my daughter hates me. Self-respect, dignity, Cost me all those things. I screwed up. Only thing I wanted to do was party and look at the mess that it got me into. Don't do it, because it's not worth it at all. People are dying every day because of prescription drugs. I'd be six feet in the ground somewhere, you know, with a piece of stone above me somewhere. Yeah, I was halfway there. I was halfway there. The choice is yours. I was a real bad <laughs> Don't be that person. Don't be me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Governor Bill Haslam. Thank you for taking time to learn about how the abuse of prescription medications and the use of synthetic drugs are damaging lives all across Tennessee. You know, awareness is the first step in addressing both of these issues. And I hope this video has provided you with some helpful information to share with your family and friends. So join us as we work to end prescription and synthetic drug abuse in our state. Together, we can make a difference.